Yeah, the web, and uh, yeah, next to me is sitting some uh, revolutionary guy, not only through styling, but also <laughs> through his ideas he's uh, realizing. It's Jonas, and uh, he is, yeah, his company is called Via Europa. Yes. Tell me, what is it about? Uh, Via Europa basically is the world's first open access model. So what we do is that we create a new infrastructure, building fiber to the home everywhere in the world, partnering up with energy companies, for an example, real estate companies. And basically what we do is that we create an ecosystem on top of fiber. So that instead of having the old world of telecom with only one provider, and you can't choose, we build one fiber and then you can have all of the service providers. You just click and choose in the marketplace. Three seconds later you have a new ISP of changed ISP. <coughs> And what this means for ordinary people is that for less than you pay for your DSL today, you will get 100 megabits symmetrical broadband. And we're proving this in Scandinavia. We've been doing this for 10 years. We've been proving it. And what we're doing now is that we're expanding it outside of Scandinavia. And once we prove that, that it's a global model, then uh, this is going to be very, very interesting indeed. And how do you want to make it to globalize that idea? Well, the thing is, we're in a lot of discussions all over the world. So all of the analysts in the telecom sector agree that this model is proven beyond any reasonable doubt in Scandinavia. So what we need to prove now is that it works outside of Scandinavia. So we're working on some very interesting countries in the emerging markets. So, you know, Africa, South America, and we're going to find a case where we can prove that this works anywhere. And then when we've done that, the, t the, world. No, the telecom sector is in a big trouble because today you have a power company they have a cable into your building they have a monopoly on this cable but not on distributing power because you can choose different power companies now we're doing the same thing with telecom the, the power company puts another cable in the building a fiber and on top of that you can choose any operator you want with just a click on a button in the marketplace and everybody's invited on equal terms so that is basically a model that when it's proven outside of Scandinavia basically takes away the telecoms. Uh, you might have a lot of people out there hating you. Yes, I'm uh, one of the most hated people in uh, the telecom sector. I've been that since many years, but I think it's an important issue that if you are an entrepreneur and you're serious about what you do, if you are loved, you're not an entrepreneur. Why is that? I know a lot of entrepreneurs who are loved because of their ideas. Well, they could be loved by the end users, but they shouldn't be, you know, loved by their own business okay. because then they're not, you know, being disruptive enough. Okay. The idea is to reinvent, not, you know, just more of the same. But you said that it took you 10 years to prove that concept in Scandinavia. Yeah. So what do you think? How much time will you need to uh, conquer the rest of the world? No, I think like this. Um, the, the important thing is the model. So when we get the model proven, and that will take roughly one or two years uh, outside of Scandinavia, then the model in itself will be very, very interesting. So a lot of other companies will try to do what we do, and that's fine, because it just spreads the model quicker. But the important thing is today, the telecom, I mean, the only thing we're doing is creating a normal marketplace. You know, if you build um, a Galleria, you don't only build a galleria, you don't try to, you know, create every bar of soap, every bar of chocolate that you're going to sell. But that's how it works in the telecom business, that they build everything and the telecom company tries to be the best at every single thing and we think that's wrong. So we're just saying the infrastructure companies that you already have, power companies, water companies, they're very good at local infrastructure. We create a marketplace, but we're not producing the services. Then everybody's invited on equal terms to compete and the end user is really the winner. Okay. Um, yeah, but you're saying that, uh, that there are lots of competitors and also a sort of monopolism. So uh, if it comes to the legal issues, it's also very, very complicated to, to work on your idea. Well, it's not very complicated because since we work with this very strong, you, you, I agree that there's our challenges that have been in the past, but that's what we spent the 10 years figuring out. Okay. Because the big thing is that we're not trying to do something that is not already there. The power company already have the right of way. They already have the infrastructure into the building. They already have all of these households as customers. Now we just put beside the electrical cable, we just put a fiber optical cable and that's it. And then we connect our ecosystem on top of it and we allow every single service provider on equal terms to be in the marketplace. So it's a fully neutral open system and then the end user 
chooses. And this is how it works in all other businesses except telecom. Okay, I, I understand that completely and uh, I think there are a lot of people out there right now saying, yeah, I want to have that one, come on, give it to me. Uh, what could the people do to make it uh, happen uh, more faster? Well, they could contact us at Via Europa because we could give them information, we could have a, a package that then they can bring to the local utility company saying, I'm really interested in the fiber service, I think that you should look at this because a lot of the success we've had in Scandinavia as you say, is coming from the grassroots because they want 100 megabit. For example, we are selling now in southern part in Sweden gigabit to every home. People pay, you know, uh, 50 euros per month and they get a gigabit, symmetrical, meaning that a blogger, for an example, could send 200 different TV channels live from a normal apartment. So this is the kind of opportunity that we're missing because we have a strange structure with one company saying that they're going to be best at everything instead of you know creating a normal marketplace. Okay. Uh, what's your personal background? Why are you up to revolutionize, uh, revolutionize our world? Huh? Yeah. Well, basically, I have a multi-tier background. So I have a background from um, military intelligence. So that's you know analyzing what is going on and what can you do and what can you not do. Uh, and that's a good thing because when you have the world's biggest companies looking on turnover as your enemies, it's good you know, to think a little bit about how threats work and stuff like that. But the other thing is that I created two other companies before this and the first one was um, uh, Framfab in Sweden. So it was, and still is, the largest um, uh, web agency outside of the US and the third largest in the world. So basically we built 3,000 people, we built digital services in, in um, the beginning of um, uh, 2000 and then we created the Swedish broadband company. So we proved in Sweden that we had a startup and we competed head on with the Swedish Telecom and in seven years we took 27% of the market. So it's easy to beat the old telcos even if you do it one on one but this is a model that will help everybody in this room, everybody watching this uh, podcast to be able to create services and on equal terms let the end users pick and choose. Mm -hmm. You mentioned before also that you're going also to Latin America and Africa. Do you think that your model is uh, the way to bring them into the internet and give them yeah, a way to connect to uh, education and everything? Definitely, because one of the problems in these countries is that you don't have efficient operations. Here, you create the passive network. You know, this is very simple stuff, but it's very important. What you do is that you dig in the ground, you put holes in buildings, and you put cables. This is best done by local companies. But then, as soon as that is done, you connect that to the ecosystem so that we can bring the world's most efficient service providers on top of the infrastructure. And this creates competition, and this creates much lower prices, much better services, and as you say, as a bonus, you get a lot of education, you get a lot of things. This is a, this is a study being done. Every percent of penetration increase on true broadband gives a development country 3% extra GDP per year. So 1% true broadband penetration increase gives 3% GDP growth, which of course is incredible. Okay, so what do you need to, to uh, make it more fast uh, happening? Oh, the thing is, um, the only thing we need now is time, because we have all of the deals, we have a lot of interest. The only thing that we are sorry about is that we at this moment cannot disclose the deals because they are in the final negotiation phase but as soon as we get ink on this paper and we're starting doing it we will let it know for everybody so that you can follow the development okay so well, but how much time will i have to wait for it? well hopefully we think that the first deal outside of scandinavia of significant size so we can prove the model beyond any doubt would be during q1 next year okay. I uh, will stay tuned and I think more people out there too. Uh, one more wish uh, you would have for the people living a more revolutionary life. Well, I think that for me it's very simple and that is that if you have a talent, I feel that it's your obligation to use that talent to the maximum potential that you have because if other people also do that, then we create a much more interesting world. Mm -hmm. So listen to that one and use your potentials and use your talents and go for it. Thank you.